In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the web view to display web pages from within your app, as you can see over here. We'll make our web view respond to clicks and back button presses, and also make it open new links within the app so the user doesn't have to leave. And all of this will be taking place inside of our app. So to get started, we're going to go to Android Studio. Inside our activity main.xml, I have a relative layout here, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to create a new web view element and its width and height will match the parent because you want it to take up all the space. We're also going to give it an ID so we can use it in our Java file and we'll give it an ID of web view. Now that we have this over here, just a very basic web view taking up the whole screen, we'll go over to our main activity and I'm going to create a global object for our web view because we're going to be doing some things with it. So I'll name it web view and I have that over here. And I'll say web view equals find view by id r dot id dot web view because that's the ID I gave it inside the XML file in activity main. Now that I have this code to actually load a URL, we have to just call a method using this web view object. So we say web view dot load URL and we pass in a URL. So for this example, I'm going to use the IG apps website. I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. And this is a link to the IG apps website so that our app, as you saw in the example before, will load the IG apps website within the app. So the user doesn't have to leave. And now I will run this and we'll see what happens. So after running it, you can see it has launched the app and we can scroll through the IG apps website, which of course is better suited for laptops, not mobile devices. But when we click on one of the links, like the IG Apps GitHub link, the button, you can see that it's asking whether I want to open it with Google Chrome or FastHub. And then what we want to do is actually make it open, uh, make our app open links within the app so that all these interactions are taking place without the user having to go to Google Chrome to open up a link. In order to do that, we're going to have to give our web view a new web view client. To do that, we just have to say webview.set webview client and we provide it with a new webview client instance. And once again, what this will do is any links that the user clicks on to open will be opened inside of our app inside the web view. It will not ask if they want to go to Google Chrome to view that link. So that's what this does. And now we can just run it to see the updated app. Sure enough, we can see that when we click on it, it open this button, it opens up GitHub instead of asking how we want to open it. Now that we have that down, you can see when I slide my finger up from the bottom right corner, which is the equivalent of the back button on my phone. When I do that, it exits the app. It doesn't actually go back in the web view. So originally we started off at the IG apps website. We clicked on the button to go to the GitHub page. And now we're at the GitHub page and we want to go back to the website except pressing the back button doesn't actually do that. So to fix that problem, we're going to use something we learned in a previous tutorial on how to override on back pressed. That's what we're going to do over here inside our main activity. We're going to override on back pressed. And now what we're going to do over here is check if our web view can go back. So that's what this method over here does. It returns a Boolean web view dot can go back. If it can go back, then we want it to go back. So we'll call web view dot go back. Otherwise, if it cannot go back, we will say super dot on back pressed. And what this will do is when the back button is pressed, it will check if our web view can go back to a previous link, like in this case, the home page for the IG apps website, then it will go back to it from the GitHub page. Otherwise, it will just do what a back button press normally does, which is what the super call over here does. And now we can run our code. So after running it, you can see sure enough, when we press on the GitHub button, it takes us to the GitHub page. I can scroll around here, visit more links like the gesture detection and other repositories that I've open sourced for you guys to use. Now, when I press the back button, the app will actually take me back to the previous web page instead of exiting the app. And I keep on doing this, it'll take me back to the home page of the IG apps website. And if I do it once more, it will exit the app. And this was just a basic tutorial on web views. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments. And as always, please share the channel with friends so that it can continue to grow and happy developing from IJ apps.